we have seen a theorem that tells us how we can find a Jordan canonical form of a matrix. The proof is actually not that hard at all. It's short and pretty adequate. So, sorry, can I say something, Yeah, okay. Dit uh, haal je er wel af, hè? Ja, je, uh, de top die haal ik eraf. Hè? <laughs> en dat zijn namelijk 5, 4, 3. We have seen a theorem that tells us how we can find the Jordan canonical form of a matrix. The proof is actually not that hard at all. Short and pretty elegant. I like easy, short and elegant proofs and I hope you do too, because that is what we are going to see in this web lecture. So first we are going to look at uh, matrix A with one cycle of generalized eigenvectors. Uh, Set OK, we pick the P uh, as follows, we just put all the generalized eigenvectors in the matrix P and then we are going to prove that P inverse times A times P is the Jordan canonical form of A. So that's the idea. Where this M matrix has the lambdas over here on the uh, diagonal and once above. How are we going to do that? Well, we use a proof which is very similar as the diagonalization. So first we know two things. We have the mapping P. P maps EI to VI because P consists of the uh, generalized eigenvector, so P times E1 equals V1 and so on. So E1 is mapped to V1 and P inverse then maps V1 back to E1. So that's one thing we need. And the second thing we need is that this A minus lambda I uh, helps us go down into, in our cycle. So starting with the last one, Vn, A minus lambda I maps Vn to V minus 1 and then V minus 1 to Vn minus 2 and so on and so forth. So the mapping A minus lambda I maps Vi to Vi minus 1. So these are the two ingredients that we need and then we are basically done. Well, that's fast, right? How exactly? Well, I said choose M equals P inverse AP, then M minus lambda I equals P inverse AP minus, I can put a P inverse and a P around here because I cancel out. So that means that M minus lambda I equals P inverse times A minus lambda I times P. I can factor out the P inverse and the P. Now I want to know the columns of the matrix M. Now what are the columns of the matrix M? Let's call them, uh, sorry, uh, uh, let's call the columns of the matrix M minus lambda I BJ. Let's determine these first. Because if I know the columns of M minus lambda I, then I also know the columns of M. So let's call the columns of M minus lambda I, let, them, let us denote them by, by BJ. So how do we, how can we find BJ? Well, BJ, just take your matrix M minus lambda I and multiply with EJ, that will give you the BJ. So what do we get for uh, M minus lambda I times EJ? Well, we have to consider two cases. Uh, first of all, uh, the J equals one case. So P1 equals then P inverse A minus lambda I times P times E1, because that is what, uh, uh, what we had over here. Like M minus lambda I can be rewritten as P inverse A minus lambda I times P. So here we put the E1. Now P times E1 gives us the V1, but V1 is an eigenvector, so a minus lambda i times v1 gives us the zero vector, and p inverse times zero vector gives us zero vector. So the first column of m minus lambda i, so b1, the first column, will give us a zero vector. Then what happens for bigger, uh, for bigger j's? Now bj is then again p inverse a minus lambda i times p times, and now ej. Now what do we get if we compute p times ej? Remember the mapping here, ej is mapped to vj. So there we go, here we have vj. What does a minus lambda i do with vj? Well, remember the mapping, vj is mapped to vj minus 1, so we st step 1 down. So we get a vj minus 1. 
And what is P inverse do with, with uh, Vj minus 1? Well, remember again the picture. P was mapping Ej to Vj and P inverse was mapping it back. So P inverse working on Vj minus 1 gives us an Ej minus 1. So our Bj equals Ej minus 1. So B2 equals E1, B3 equals E2. And then what, then what do we get? First column with zeros for our M minus delta I. Second column B2 equals E1, B3 equals E2, and so on until the last one, Bn equals En minus 1. So there we have our M minus delta I. And of course, M is on just the same matrix with the ones and then lambdas on the diagonal, which was uh, sorry, was, which was exactly the matrix M, which we had over here. So that proves the theorem if you have just one cycle, just one Jordan block. Now generalizing to more cycles is straightforward. So if you know how to do this for one cycle, uh, you also know how to do this if you have multiple cycles. Then you define your P uh, by just putting all the generalized eigenvectors in your matrix P, First the first cycle, then the second cycle, third cycle, and so on. You again compute P inverse A times P. And uh, then uh, your uh, M matrix will ha not have one Jordan block, but multiple Jordan blocks over here. And you do exactly the same proof, only in the proof you replace uh, J by J equals P1 plus J for the second block, and J equals P1 plus P1 p2 plus j for the third block and so on. Uh, so in this way you can prove the theorem also have, if you have uh, multiple blocks uh, and multiple cycles.